Hello, I'm Dr. Angelo Landrasina, AKA Dermangelo, board certified dermatologist, skincare enthusiast, and acne survivor. Today, we are going to talk about the most common skin condition, acne. Before we get into it, make sure you're following along on all social media at Dermangelo. I'm on Instagram, I'm on TikTok, I'm on Twitter, and we talk about acne and a whole lot of other skin conditions all the time. So follow along. So I know that this article has a really clickbaity title. I will not be able to tell you why you personally have acne um, just because I don't know you. I don't know the specifics of your medical history. And that's why it's always great to go to a doctor yourself. And on that note, nothing in this video should be considered to be medical advice. None of my information that I ever present is individualized medical advice. So take it as informational. It is just here for information and education purposes. Why did I wanna talk about this topic? Obviously acne is something that affects so many people. And I think that so much of the time people don't understand where it comes from. They don't understand how to treat it. And quite often people are stuck in a cycle of trying to get better, not getting anywhere, and in turn, putting the blame on themselves. You know, I don't drink enough water, I don't wash my face enough, I'm not healthy enough, and that's why I have acne. Now, as we go through the different factors contributing to acne, you're gonna see one common theme, and that theme is it's not your fault. There are so many factors that play into the development of acne. It is never the fault of the person suffering with it. I also noticed that there there is very little content out there explaining why acne happens. And if you want to effectively treat a problem, I think that knowing where the problem comes from is very important. Before I go any further, just know that a lot of the information that I'm giving you here is in general terms. It's meant to be understood by the layperson. There may be exceptions to some of the stuff that I talk about, but this will give you the broad strokes of why acne happens. So here we go. Firstly, what is acne? Acne is a disorder of the pilosebaceous unit. The pilosebaceous unit is an adnexal structure in the skin, and it's composed of a hair, an oil gland, and an erector pili muscle. The majority of our skin is covered in these pilosebaceous units, with some exceptions. In the United States, acne affects tens of millions of people per year and leads to billions of dollars in healthcare expenditures. Yes, billions with a B. The highest incidence of acne is in adolescence, and that's something that you may have noticed already. However, it affects a large number of adults too, including up to 35% of women in their 30s. So this isn't just a teenage problem. Let's go over the anatomy of a pimple. The primary lesion that causes a pimple is something called a comedone. A comedone is made up of a blockage in that pilosebaceous unit. That blockage is made up of shed skin cells called keratinocytes and oil called sebum. Now, some factors that play into this comedone formation include increased proliferation of those keratinocytes or the cells on the outer layers of the skin and increased cohesiveness. So these cells actually becoming stickier, increased sebum or oil production from the sebaceous gland in the pilosebaceous unit also plays a role. Now that comedone can lead to the formation of a few different types of lesions that we see on the skin. Pustules, which are those classic pus bumps with a white surface that we tend to think of pimples as. You can also get open comedones, which are classically referred to as blackheads. When the lesion itself becomes a little bit more inflamed, red, and is sitting a little bit deeper, that's called an inflammatory papule. And if that inflammatory papule ruptures, causing more inflammation, it could result in a nodule or cyst. So comedone formation is one of the primary factors leading to the formation of acne. Another factor here is inflammation. Now, I know that I just made a distinction between inflammatory papules and other types of acne, and the development of inflammation in acne 
acne or in anything else really is really complex. But all you need to know in this case is that all acne has an inflammatory component. Inflammation is going to play a very big role in acne, whether you have mostly pustules, mostly nodules, inflammation is always there. The next contributing factor to acne is bacteria. Now this is a major source of misinformation when it comes to our collective consciousness around acne. Bacteria plays a role, oh, therefore if you have acne, you must be dirty. Wrong! And you're gonna see why. The main bacteria that plays a role in acne is called Cutibacterium acnes. Funny name because it ain't cute. Cutibacterium acnes is actually what's called a commensal organism. It's part of our normal microbiome and it actually lives on everyone. That's right, this type of bacteria is present on everyone's skin whether they have acne or not. Now, you may be saying to yourself, if everybody has this species of bacteria on their skin, why doesn't everybody have acne? And that's a difficult question to answer. Research hasn't fully elucidated why some people have stronger reactions to see acnes than others. It could be differences in inflammatory responses from person to person. It could also be differences in certain strains of this type of bacteria, but the jury's still out. The way that C. acne's bacteria plays a role in acne is basically that it amps up the inflammation. It does this by several mechanisms and can do this in different ways in different people. But basically, think about it like this. If acne is already present, the presence of this bacteria can make acne worse. That's why some of the tried and true treatments for acne, like benzoyl peroxide or antibiotics, actually target this type of bacteria and do have an effect. The next contributing factor in acne is hormones. Now, you may have already gathered that hormones play a central role in acne because it tends to come about around puberty. There is kind of a complex mechanism by which this happens, but generally, the type of hormones that lead to acne development are ones called androgens. Androgens are typically produced by the testes. They were classically referred to as male hormone and are commonly produced by people with an XY genotype. The archetypal androgen is a hormone called testosterone. Now, androgens lead to some changes within the pilosebaceous unit that can lead to acne. Chief among them is keratinocyte hyperproliferation, so more skin cells being produced and being shed into the pilospatious unit to become pore blockages or comedones. Androgens also lead to increased sebum or oil production. Now, you may be saying to yourself, I'm not an XY person, I don't have any testes, why do I still have acne? And that's because our hormones can be transitioned back and forth. So if you're somebody with ovaries and you're producing estrogen, some of those estrogens can become androgens and can lead to the development of acne. This is the reason why certain medical conditions like PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome, where more estrogens are being produced, can lead to acne. If there's more estrogen sitting around, there's more of it that could be transitioned into androgen. This is also the reason why people who are getting hormonal treatments for medical reasons could see acne development, whether that be people on testosterone or people with hormonal IUDs for birth control and for other medical reasons. So hormones will play a central role in acne development. The next factor that could be playing a role in the development of acne is genetics. Now, this is again not a simple factor to talk about. They have not described or discovered a single gene that predetermines or predisposes a person to acne. However, there have been a few different gene loci, meaning certain spots within the genome that have been associated with the development of acne or acne severity. It's also been shown that there is a high concordance or similarity between acne incidence and severity in identical twins. So a lot of times in genetics you'll see identical twin studies used. They're considered kind of a gold standard to look at nature or nurture as a cause for something. Usually what they do is they'll look at identical twins and compare them to fraternal twins. 
means. That way you're able to kind of control for people's environment and upbringing. If they're raised in the same type of situation, have the same environment that they grow up in, only the identical twins are genetically identical and the fraternal twins clearly are not. So genetics do play some sort of role. However, they are not the be all end all, nor is anything else that I've told you about already. The final possible contributing factor to acne or acne severity is diet. Now, I know this is a hot button issue. A lot of people suffering with acne will try to change their diets as an acne treatment, whether that be increasing their water intake, avoiding fried food or junk food or sugar. However, there are a few things that we know. The foods that seem to impact acne, notice my words there, impact, not cause, are dairy products, but specifically skim milk products. And by skim milk products, I mean anything that's not full fat. Whey protein supplements also seem to impact acne severity. And lastly, high glycemic index foods. So those are foods that will immediately spike your blood glucose really high after you eat them. It's controversial how much diet plays a role in acne development. My opinion and my interpretation of the data is that diet and these specific foods may impact acne severity. So I usually tell my patients, diet can impact your acne. It's very unlikely that what you're eating is giving you acne, meaning that the things that you eat might make your acne a little bit more severe. But it shouldn't be expected that changing your diet will make your acne go away completely. And it's for this reason that I never recommend dietary changes as a treatment for acne. And there you have it. Those are some of the factors playing into the development of acne. Now, as you may have gathered, this is a really complicated topic. There's a lot of different contributing factors. And like I said before, the best way to get control of your acne is to talk to your own personal physician, see a derm, see a derm provider, talk to your primary care doctor. Because speaking with a provider who knows your medical history is gonna be the best way to find the solution for you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you made it to this point in the video, you probably learned something, so hit the thumbs up anyway. And the notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload. Ciao.